Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm very excited. And I wanted to do a talk today about um, kind of going in to manage a long standing community without completely crushing it because that can't happen. And I wanted to do that because it does have some very unique challenges. But those unique challenges I also think are very relevant to community management as a whole. And those issues tend to be that when you go in to manage a new community and you've got no followers and you're starting from scratch, you will go in and build your plan and you will get your stats and do your research and you'll go from there and you'll get your first follower in second and you will learn as you go what they like, what they don't. But that's not going to work if you are going into manage a community that's been there for 10, 20 years or has 100,000 plus followers on any given platform. Um, and you need to be much more people focused straight away going in than you would do if it's, it's brand new and you can kind of build that brand yourself and build that voice yourself. And there are some initial really basic points to consider which are that members of any long-standing community will be very used to things being done in a certain way. Literally every interaction that you have with them or they have with you, they will expect a certain voice, expect a certain tone and messaging. People don't like to feel like they're talking to a company anymore, especially not since that gap between indie developers and consumers is getting kind of shortened and smaller and smaller. They want to feel like they're talking to people and they will be very used to talking to the previous community manager in a certain way and being spoken to in a certain way. And another issue to consider is that if you don't have certain official spaces, so if you don't have a Discord a few years ago, if you didn't have a forums, the chances are that they will already exist and they'll be unofficial and people will be hanging out there. Um, and most of these things, the issues that can arise are people's responses to changes. And because social media is always changing, it never stands still. Um, look how fast memes come and then we'll forget about them the week after. We need to keep changing constantly and we can't stand still without losing that familiar brand and tone. We need to learn how to evolve it constantly. And um, the chat tools we use and the way uh, their, their popularity is changing all the time. And as part of your job as a community manager, it will always be to expand your audience, not just to keep the current audience happy. It's going to mean that you have to change a few things and you have to make sure that you do it in the right way. So it's as easy a transition as possible. A few examples that we have personally. I have been the community manager and social media manager for Oddworld Inhabitants for almost two years now. And I found that because it's such a long-standing community, they had their own unofficial forums which were made with such dedication and passion that everyone who wasn't there from the start thought it was official. And they already had their Discord, and again, people thought it was official. And the few people who tend to moderate these and set them up, they literally know everything about the brand and the company and the games that there is to know. So again, this kind of comes across as an official thing, which the only problem with it is obviously if the messaging isn't in correlation with how you do your messaging or your brand, you can't monitor what's said in there. There's going to be some problems not only with letting people know that that's not an official space without it seeming like you're trying to put people off from visiting it because it was there before you were. You also want to make your own so you can monitor it and you don't want to feel like you're trying to pull everyone across and demolish what was there before. It's very difficult to enter into any unofficial space and suddenly moderate it. And I was very lucky because everyone who moderated all the unofficial spaces immediately, I think the first day I started on the job, they made me moderator of all of their places. It's so nice. But it's still very difficult to go in and moderate something that's existed for years before you were there. And for example, if people have no problems with swearing in these forums or in these discords, you, it's very hard to have an official standing in an official place and it gets very confusing very quickly. 
Um, so what we did was we set up official online spaces and we had to try and find a way to do it without trampling all over the existing ones. Um, another big problem is that your rules are going to be much stricter. Like I said, we have a very strict no swearing rule in our official Discord, which can be problematic at times because in the unofficial spaces, everyone's so kind of used to speaking how they want to. People forget and they slip up and you have to keep reminding them. Um, and the best ways I've found to resolve these issues is to just be completely people focused, which again, I think is something that is easy to forget when you focus on solely on stats and charts and graphs and engagements. So we created our own official places and we joined the, official, the unofficial ones to show that we did have interest in both. And we will talk on both, um, but we'll make it very clear that we'll only share our official ones on Twitter and on our Facebook. Um, we try to make the spaces a welcoming place for both old and new fans. So we did that by putting in place a lot of rules that weren't in the existing unofficial fan forums. Uh, obviously the people who made the unofficial Discord and the unofficial forums were there on our new Discord first, as soon as they saw that link they were in. So we took the time to ask them what they'd like to see in the Discord, uh, to see what kind of channels they wanted, to see how they wanted this to work. For example, we made a special role for regulars on the server who, we have over a thousand people in there, and there are some people who are in there every waking hour constantly. And we wanted to show them that we appreciated it, especially as they are all the people who have been there since the very beginning, or way before I was here, um, five, six, seven community managers back. So we tried our best to make sure that they felt welcome. We put music channel in, at a request a fan meet channel. So whenever there's a games conference, we can um, meet up, resort, they always know where to look. And we reassured the existing community members that we were not just going to ask if we could close down the unofficial spaces. And another thing that kind of threw me off at first was, like I mentioned earlier, when we had our no swearing rule, people will slip up a lot with that if they're used to talking to the same group of people in a certain way. And at first I thought they were doing it on purpose to uh, wind me up, but <laughs> they weren't. And I found that although you have to remind them of the rules, if you are more kind of gentle when you're enforcing that and just gently remind them because you've essentially moved a group of people from one space into another and they've been there for a very long time. Um, so there's going to be some kind of teething issues as you move along. Um, another very important thing that we found was to keep your voice as you kind of change things and change things you say and the way you say them um, because obviously the way people react on social media towards businesses is changing all the time and you need to keep up with that but you can't kind of forget the original branding, the original humour, the original messaging and you will have to compromise to draw new people in. For example, Odd World is very well known for its fart jokes. And I still do them, we'll do them from time to time, but we don't do them as much as we did before I got here. Because as, especially as we um, kind of, obviously we're working uh, on Odd World Soulstorm right now that's being developed. We um, don't, we kind of need to um, get all those new eyes on it from people who maybe grew up with the old games and haven't heard of Odd World. And we want to kind of make it as less niche a space as possible while keeping that same humor that we know and that Oddworld's always been known for. Um, we have to, that's taken a lot of reassuring as well, especially um, if we've had things out that have had a bit of a darker theme or a less goofy theme than we've had before. It's a lot of compromise and a lot of reassuring people. And another thing we found one thing we found that would kind of, we thought might pull in a new audience and keep the old audience members very happy was we were trying to think of something to do with our Instagram because it wasn't very active at all. And obviously the way social media is changing, people are responding much better towards um, videos and images. And we found a whole host of old, really old artwork from the 90s 
to probably about the year 2000. Lots of old concept art that we thought was lost. And lots of stuff that the kind of hardcore fan base had been wanting to see for a long, long time. And that's generally just good art. So if you have an Instagram set up that's just full of good art, people are going to come to it whether or not they know what it is. Um, and we started posting one of those every single weekday onto our Instagram. And they went down really, really well. People still love them. But every now and then we will get a comment on our Facebook or our Twitter saying, I already have a Facebook and a Twitter. I don't want to make an Instagram as well. And obviously you can see them on Instagram without making an account, but you can't fully engage, you can't comment, you can't like. And at first I kind of brushed those comments aside because it is really quick to make a social media account, it's not difficult. Until people started to tell me that it was kind of social media fatigue, like they didn't want anymore. And I think that's something that as a social media manager I forget because my immediate thought is it takes like five, six seconds to get your email in there and set it up. But then the other day, probably a couple of Sundays ago, for the first time in about two years, I just put my phone down one Sunday and I didn't touch it. And I read a book. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot how, well, when you've got your social media open all the time, I forget how fatiguing that can be. And this is coming from someone who social media is my job, so I love it. So if you don't, you can get fatigued a lot quicker easier and although that's something that is completely understandable again we had to compromise and um, they were asking that we just posted them all on our Facebook and all on our Twitter and obviously that's a lot of images to have to scroll through on websites that aren't made exclusively for images and people who do co do follow all three platforms they don't want to see the same kind of carbon copy of each other as we go down but I also didn't want to see more fair. So the compromise that we came to was that if we had something that was particularly unique or special, we would share it on our Facebook as well, uh, our Twitter as well. If we had something that was particularly colourful, we did um, Colour Mondays for a while where when we found ones that weren't black and white, because people always respond to them better, they're always a bit more interesting, we shared those on our Facebook and our Twitter as well. And it, sometimes you can't make everyone happy. It didn't make everyone happy that we wouldn't post them every single day onto our other social networks. But sometimes you, you just kind of have to compromise but also do what you know is the right thing to do and follow your gut. Um, another thing we tried to do with Keep On Brand, we announced recently that we are going to release Stranger's Wrath on the Nintendo Switch. And we were thinking about a good way to kind of announce that. We did kind of a official teaser announcement because we took it to EGX. But we, I felt like I'd not done anything in a while that kind of kept that humor that Oddworld's known for, that kind of um, kind of goofy, but also at the same time somehow kind of dry, flippant humor. So we took, my colleague took his switch and he got the old Stranger's Wrath disc from the 360 and he just threw it on top of the switch and it went down so well that's the best thing we've done engagement wise and I'm annoyed that I didn't do it mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we it went down so well with people who like really quick short bursts of video I mean I like words I've never ever been a big video fan but you can't deny that the world is kind of moving more towards video for social media and it was, I think it was maybe like five, six seconds long. And it did really well with social media in general, but then it also went down really well with kind of the community that had already been there because it was something new that used the humor that they're kind of used to and that they enjoy seeing. So to kind of summarize, I think it's really important to, that we remember to be, although stats and graphs and charts are so useful, like we definitely need them. I do think that we can all get lost when we're focusing too hard on them, if we're giving updates, if we're kind of doing our weekly thing where we look where our stats are at, where our engagement's at. I think it's very easy to not forget, but kind of stray away from the fact that you are managing a community full of people. And as people, although we've got big old brains and we're complicated, if you know your community that you're managing and you go far enough back from before you started, you study enough, you can 
kind of understand that reaction that they will have to things before you do it. And I think as far as moving forward and doing new things goes, that you, people are afraid a lot of the time, I think, with long-standing communities to trial things. Because obviously the anything that you do on social media, especially for a brand, is going to be very, very public. So as a community manager, any mistake you make will be a very public mistake. And you've got to ride with it. And there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with trying something that doesn't work. And I think the best way to kind of trial it without it seeming like a big mistake is to be very genuine with people because that you can never be too genuine with people especially with long-standing communities you need to be open and honest and if you say we're going to try this or we did try this do you think it worked and then you need to use your kind of knowledge and skill as a community manager with the feedback that you're getting from people who have been there since before you were there and from the new people who you're getting in and they will let you know if they think it worked or if it didn't. And if it didn't, it really doesn't matter. You can make public mistakes as long as they're not horrific. You can try things that don't work and then you can just try again and try again until you find something that gets that engagement up that pleases both the older community members and the newer ones. Um, as long as you compromise and you try new things and you remember that the people who were there before you will likely be very passionate and care very much about the brand and like everything to be in the way that they're used to you can work together with them to bring those new people in and make it a welcoming space for everybody so it will continue to grow and to thrive and to flourish and everyone will be happy uh, thank you <laughs>